Oh, super lovers, you got such a double-edged sword here. In one side, I really want to compliment you because you really stuck through and made this story about Haru and Ren. Like, it was really metaphorical, but really good. But at the same time, you really shafted Shima and Aki and the little girl. That was kind of painful. I mean, I was really interested in this little girl's story and this whole broken family, her being possibly bullied at school, dropping out, the whole thing. And they just never went anywhere with it. Which kind of reminded me of the whole Haru and his mystery past lover thing. I mean, they brought that up. It started so strong. It seemed like Haru might actually call her and then they just dropped it out of nowhere. <laughs> and again, way back to like the original Asakura-san who was like that psycho yandere for Haru. I really wanted her to like get over her drama and move on with her life and to show some more interesting development for her but she was really just there as a stepping stone for Haru and Ren to have a little bit of development and a little bit of a crisis moment kind of thing so in one way I'm really happy that they have developed Haru and Ren so well in such a small amount of time and really focused on them so much but some of the background characters they introduce are too good <laughs> they're too interesting to me they draw me in and I want to find out their stories and the stories just don't go anywhere. So that's really painful to me. And it's just a sign of how good they are at showing a character, getting you interested in them, making them a really cool character, really. <laughs> and then just the fact that they don't really do much with it and they prefer to focus on Haru and Ren. While good for the story overall is just painful for me who actually likes those characters. But yeah, let me know what you guys think because that's how I feel about it. This episode as a whole was good. I liked seeing White Fang in action. I liked seeing Haru be cute. The whole thing with the little girl he picked up and all the mothers around him being so in love with him. <laughs> it really shows how perfect Haru is at this position and, you know, how great he's going to be in the future. How amazingly this cafe is going to run. And especially with how well everything is flowing between the morning and the evening. The fact that Haru still gets to do everything that he wants to. And just the name White Fang, man. Like, that's a really cool name for a cafe. I'd hang out with White Fang. I mean, I actually probably wouldn't because it would be rather distracting with horror around. But still, White Fang is a cool name. <laughs> well, so I just have to bring it up here right now because I didn't get to talk about it last episode because I was having a week's break, but... Kyoka's a dude. <laughs> I mean, I think I guessed that when I first met Kyoka. I'm not sure if I said it in my review. But I remember thinking... She has that deep voice. Maybe the reason she hates Ren is because she's a guy and she was probably lying to herself a little and thinking that Haru wasn't into her specifically because she was a guy. But my god. That was kind of amazing. Just the way she whipped it out out of nowhere. Figuratively. Get your mind out of the gutter. She didn't whip that out. But just the way <laughs> when that poor kid confessed like it was all super into her. And was trying to get close to her. She was just like, oh, but I'm not miss. I'm a mister. That was brilliant. So aside from that, this episode was greatness. The gym teacher, who was also the homeroom teacher, was trying to get Ren to smile and be more emotive with his friends, I guess. But Ren's not really at that stage right now. He's still emotionally repressed to all shit. Like he's never really grown or developed, I guess, emotionally since he was a kid and you know, people around him don't seem to worry too much about that. I mean, they know he's been abused as a child. They know shit like that would hold you back. And I think Ren had that moment in this episode, which is so adorable of realizing everyone's been looking after him and accepting the fact that he's not going to grow and just hoping that he does someday and realizing it's not his fault and just not caring, looking after him anyway. And that was adorable. It really was, especially the moment that Ren realized it and just held Haru close. And then Haru felt that loving moment, realized that his feelings had gotten through to him and started to cry like a bitch. That was fantastic. And then the way it ended with Haru like crawling up with his brothers and then Ren waking up as well and them all sitting around watching TV together. Just feeling like the family that Haru always wanted. So yeah, there was a lot of awesomeness in this episode. Like I said, I'm really disappointed that the secondary storyline didn't much go anywhere. I mean, we kind of had hints towards what's going on with Aki and Shima. Little bit of hints that Aki and Shima are kind of 
with each other. <laughs> I mean, not really. It's a strange thing, because I wouldn't put it past this show, which already has, like, the really old male and younger male couple that are half... Not even half brothers. They're not really related. But legally brothers. They're already a couple. <laughs> so I wouldn't put it past them to throw a bit of wincest in this show. And they have kind of hinted it. I mean, Ren points out that Shima must like the girl because she's so much like Aki. Aki has these super jealous moments when it comes to Shima. And, you know, I naturally expected that Aki was going to be into Haru and jealous over Ren, so... Well, this is just a slightly different angle of that, which would be interesting in itself, I guess. I mean, they are kind of background characters anyway. They haven't really been developed through this story at all. And to be honest, they're not that interesting. I knew it was cute when Aki was having bonding moments with Ren, but Aki and Shima, like, separate from Haru and Ren, they're not very interesting. They're more funny as background characters commenting on the Haru and Ren relationship. Just like, especially that moment in this episode when Haru was like, you can't walk around naked like that in front of anyone but me. And they pointed out how dirty that sounds. <laughs> I loved that moment. It was just like perfect for them. That little dry bit of humor from Shiba and then the over the top. Wow. It completely sums you up from Aki. It was greatness. <laughs> so yeah, this episode was great, adorable. It's just got me a little bit divided. Still, we've got two episodes left, so I'm thinking they're going to set up something big in the next episode and then have, like, a big emotional conclusion in episode 10. We see a really cool-looking character with dark hair and glasses who might be someone that will be against Haru, I would imagine. Like, I'm looking for tropes. This is my thing. When I'm watching a boy's love or a shonen eye kind of thing... I naturally look for things that have happened before in the genre because there are a lot of them in this and shoujo and all kinds of other things. So I'm expecting the triangle to appear at some point, which is why I naturally assume this guy is going to either be into Ren or just in general be against Haru. Maybe think that he's helping Ren and think that Haru is actually abusing Ren or something like that. So that would actually make a pretty fitting conclusion if they add that in episode nine, start up the storyline of this guy looking like he's interested in Ren, but really just worrying about him, and then have a big emotional conclusion in episode 10, but that might not happen at all. Otherwise, I don't know. The preview was not really <laughs> that detailed, so I have no idea what's actually coming. But I'm looking forward to it. It's just a little bit sad that this one ends so early. Studio Dean have been on fire recently. And that was another thing. The comedy in this show, just in general, has just been getting better every week. So yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you like this review, then wreck that like button like you mean it. Subscribe if you haven't already seen more. And I will see you guys next time.